This is Mike Flynn from the Technology Innovation and Developer Experience Team at SAP. We're here with Dr. Helm Kretschma, Hi. who is from uh, TUM, Technical University of, of Munich, is uh, currently doing and has done extensive research in the area of open innovation and innovation management. What I'm going to ask um, Helmut to, to do is to talk a little bit about his impressions from discussions that we've held over roughly the past day and a half, um, talking across a broad number of topics as it relates to SAP. Um, but as well, I'm going to ask uh, Professor Kretschma to discuss a little bit in detail about an aspect of, of innovation management and open innovation that at least I've not seen talked about it extensively, and that's the whole idea, idea of um, ambidexterity in the context of, of innovation, and he'll uh, illuminate on, on that a, a little bit. So if you don't mind, uh, Helmut, why don't you give us some of your impressions that you've come away with over this past day, day and a half? First of all, thanks for getting me out here and look at the various innovation initiatives that they were to study and that is already my very first impression that there is a large variety of different innovation initiatives in SAP um, and they are all focused on the various partners, um, customers, ecosystem um, that the innovations will come from and it's also very interesting uh, to note that they are very often pretty focused. They are focus on the solution delivery um, and they also give us as researchers huge richness of formats um, and tools are actually um, together with that variety of many flowers blooming uh, there of course also is uh, probably the internal debate on which one of these many flowers is the nicest ones which one uh, smells best and which really gives the uh, best advantage I think that is an interesting uh, course that I see that there is a rift between bringing together the various initiatives and at the same time starting new ones. Um, I think uh, from the outside very often SAP is seen as a company that's driving uh, innovation now getting a little more insight uh, into the inside. Uh, you can see how many different people are actually trying to work it out and bring more ideas. We spent time both with folks who uh, are on the research side yesterday um, as well as, as some product development and then today spoke with um, a gentleman out of uh, one of our uh, services teams. And I think that topically there seem to be a, a number of things, particularly as it relates to innovation management that we're very interested in following in the context of what has been done at TUM and, and so forth. And maybe this is, gives us a little bit of a, a segue to this whole notion of ambidexterity. And if, if you could just take a few moments to kind of talk about the, the concept and, and its relationship to, I would say, companies both big and small, obviously SAP being on the larger end, but I think much of it also is just as applicable to, uh, to some degree, even startups. Well, Michael, we spent a day and a half talking about the whole path of open innovation, idea competitions, and so on, and it is interesting that uh, we at uh, TUM started out with uh, near idea competitions, went over to uh, communities where ideas are collaboratively uh, built together and then went into the overall notion of how much absorptive capacity does the organization need to take in those ideas. And in this process of really embarking on the studying process, uh, we came across the notion of ambidexterity. Uh, ambidexterity usually m meaning you are capable of using both hands. Uh, in the organizational context it very often means that you can be an explorative organization as well as an exploitative organization at the same time. Um, and if we turn that and put that together with the issues of absorptive capacity uh, that we have in innovation management, which is that 
how much of the ideas that you have produced in open innovation, how much of the ideas that the um, employees and customers have produced in all kind of jam sessions, um, how much of them can you absorb? You realize that very often organizations are torn. That's how they express it. Or that they're really torn between the need for what's called a breakthrough innovation and the need of staying on the choose course of action and exploit the capabilities you already have. And I think that the notion of ambidexterity, being capable of doing exploration and being capable of doing exploitation, uh, is a very nice analogy that we, we work on, uh, because it really shows a tornness within the organization. Now, I would love to take away the term of being torn uh, into the term of being capable of doing it both ways. And I think what we are presently studying is uh, what kind of organizational structures, what kind of processes, and what kind of timing understanding do you need. There is probably a time to explore and a time to exploit, um, and there is probably um, a department to exploit and a department to explore, but we really come to see as a major issue that this is issue of handoff, mm -hmm. um, the issue of when do you switch. Uh, and if you let me take the sports analogy, uh, shifting the ball during the shoot in basketball from the right to your left hand, this mere shifting, uh, this movement across uh, is one of the ones that you really need to train uh, if you want to become ambidextrous. So our present focus is how do we find, how do we understand uh, this capability of the organization of shifting between the two. We think you know, or has caused me to think long and hard just in terms of how you reach that point. So to continue with the analogy a little bit further, the, the handoff, if, if you will, or the, the shift, a ball from one hand to the other, or going from exploration to exploitation, almost has to become second nature. And in that context, our team has, has taught off and on both among, amongst ourselves as, as well as with other members of the open innovation community about this whole notion of ultimately incorporating it into the DNA of the organization. And, you know, I, I was wondering in terms of some of the research that TUM has done, if you've seen, you know, similar kinds of uh, challenges expressed in terms of how do you get to a point where you actually incorporate that into the enterprises or the company's DNA. It's interesting you mentioned the issue of organizational culture um, with that regard because ambidexterity then in innovation management really means the capability of the individual but also the organization to what seems to be effortless, to effortlessly switch between those different modes. I don't think it's effortless. I, I think it has to be routinized and planned. It has to be put into the framing of the mind that you could do that. And that you just routinely take that uh, to loosen your muscles on the one side, uh, that you employ your muscles on the other side, if you take the ambidexterity uh, notion. Cycle. And I think it would be very worthwhile um, to, as a first step, uh, focus on this um, uh, moment of shift, uh, the process of shift, or even the process of curation, so you can actually shift back and forth, and uh, over time that will be embedded in the uh, just day-to-day -day routinized practices that you will look at the innovation idea from both sides, from the exploitative as well as exploration side, and that you will find the necessary organizational specializations and who is doing what in a better mode, and at the same time understand um, that the going back and forth between the modes is really a, a organizational capability uh, that enhances innovation management. And these are exactly the ideas that we want to put forward, not just within and across SAP, but across our entire community. And that includes customers, partners, and even those who are not yet customers or, or partners because obviously we don't have um, all of the world's great knowledge, although we'd love to think so, um, incorporated in, into SAP. There are plenty of, of other brilliant thinkers such as, as yourself 
who can contribute and really keep momentum going in terms of the context around innovation management and, and open innovation. So I definitely want to thank you, thank you, Helmut, for joining us uh, over the course of this past day and a half, and we'll look forward to uh, collaborating with you ongoing. You're welcome. Well, thanks so much. to be with you.